you, you've done a bunch of work looking at um, immune function and how that immune function often gets skewed in chronic illness. So tell us a little bit about, about that work. You know, I discovered this first back when I was studying AIDS. Uh, and I was so interested in the fact that uh, back in the 80s, we were testing all these antibodies. So it has the antibodies for everything, all the viruses, antibodies for candida, antibodies for Lyme, whatever. We we're out, all these antibodies. And, and from doing that after a couple of years, I realized, you know what? These people that I'm seeing with these chronic illnesses, they have high antibodies to like all kinds of things, not just one thing. They, yeah. It's sort of like they're antibody factories, you know, and, and, and they're, they're having antibodies to stuff we all get exposed to. We all have antibodies to these things, but these sick people had way more antibodies. Yeah. So then back in the 90s, I read this really crucial paper where they were looking at uh, men with AIDS versus men without AIDS and so forth and so on. But the bottom line was in this paper, they talked about two aspects of the immune system. One would be the Th1 system uh, with the helper cells and the uh, suppressor cells. And the other would be the Th2 system, which produced the antibodies. And what they were able to show in this, this paper in 1993 was that the controls, the quote, healthy controls, were already shifted away into producing too many antibodies. Wow. They were already in a Th2 dominant state, where they're just making all these antibodies. And, uh, you know, we were just having a discussion before uh, we started this about how these antibodies create problems all by themselves. You know, we like to think, well, antibodies are great and everything. Oh, well, everything's wonderful unless you get too much of it. And so we started, so that's, that's what turned me on. And I started looking at the reason people getting sick is not so much the thing that actually initiates the process, which could be a bacteria or a virus or a petrochemical or whatever, but, but it's the, the imbalance in the immune system this Th1 to Th2 shift that actually is responsible for them being vulnerable to it. Yeah, you know, I mean, you bring up a, a, a really important point that I always like to remind people of that the trigger, we, we often, we spend a lot of time looking for the trigger for the illness because sometimes we remove the trigger and it does make a big difference, you know, so it's always important to do that. But Unfortunately, most of the time when illness has persisted for a few years and you're not getting better, the trigger is no longer the dominant force. It's yeah, the yeah. response. And that's what you're talking about is, is that persistent, that persistent habit of the immune system. And so, and and so tell us, I mean, so you you look at that as a well, tell me more about how you look at that. I I, I have well, I, I yeah, I started studying it, looking at it, and saying, well, okay, what's mm -hmm. causing this shift? And it turns out it's really fascinating because the there you certain certain uh, certain triggers tend to trigger the Th1, certain triggers tend to predominantly trigger the Th2. So, so, and then what we learned was that when the Th2 is triggered, it shuts down the Th1. It actually inhibits it. When the Th1 is triggered, it inhibits the Th2. So it's sort of like the body is saying, you know, I'm Th1, I've got this, we don't need your antibodies right now. Or the Th2 is saying, no, no, you need, you need us antibodies right now. So I'm going to just shut down the Th1 innate system so that I, we can concentrate on the antibodies. So they, they, they actually suppress each other. So I was, uh, what I wanted to do was look at and say, okay, what's in the literature as things we can look at that stimulates predominantly Th2? And what's in the literature really surprised me in a way. One was parasites. Parasites selectively stimulate Th2. They don't stimulate Th1. Petrochemicals and pesticides selectively stimulate Th2, not Th1. Vaccines. Vaccines 
selectively stimulate Th2, not Th1. And, uh, and uh, fungal infections uh, predominantly stimulate Th2. They don't stimulate Th1. And that got me going because all of a sudden something's starting to make sense to me. You, you know, we got these people that might already be in a kind of a shift where the Th2 is overbalanced and then they get around these things and it'll selectively push them right over the cliff. Yeah, yeah, no, and, and the thing is, and what makes it even more interesting is that sometimes some of the, some of the bugs will actually shift the immune system a little bit in that way to protect themselves. They'll kind of like push us a little bit towards that Th2 system so we kind of leave them alone. Um, a lot of these bugs are intracellular. The, the, the Th2 antibodies can't get to them, like viruses in particular, but the mycoplasma, they're intracellular. That Th2, the antibodies don't do that. The only thing that does that is Th1. Right. You, better, you better be having your Th1 up or you're not going to get to so many of these infections. You can't get to them. You can stop the free-floating organ, organism. But to actually get to the factories that are making them, forget it, it's useless.